This episode of McCall's Quilting Quilt Along is brought to you by BetterTex, fabric for quilters by quilters. Hi, welcome back to the McCall's Quilting Glorietta Quilt Along. I'm Laura Roberts and I'm the person who gets to play with all the fabric and play with you. So this week we're going to be doing half blocks. This is half block D. And half block D comes in two colorways. This one, the purple one, or purpler one, and the one that has that beige outer bit, the outer patches. So I'm gonna show you how to put these together. They aren't hard to do at all. They're just a few little tricks, and I'm gonna show you how to join them to one another because that's the only place where it could get a little confusing. So one thing about these blocks is that you really have to match point, you draw match points in some areas. Okay, not all of them, but in some. So the most important ones, if you aren't gonna do match points on anything else, do match points on these little triangles. These little triangles are how you're going to um, align two, trying, two of your big pieces together. So you really need to have it on the back of that little piece. And you also need to put them on the back of this little piece. Okay, this, believe it or not, this piece doesn't really have to have them. I've marked them on here, but I wouldn't really have to. If you're only going to mark a couple, it's this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so just a little refresher on how to mark match points. It's super easy. I'm just going to take a ruler where I can see a, a good quarter inch, good quarter inch markings. I like this ruler a lot because I think it's easy to see. And I've got a pencil here. You can use anything that you can see that isn't going to go through the fabric. So I just have a little mechanical pencil, and I'm holding that ruler down pretty tightly. Otherwise, when you, when you make your little mark, it can shift, and then it won't be where you want it to be. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. Come here. Oh, I'm talking to it again. Right here. I hope you've had fun sewing A blocks. I'm guessing your B blocks are looking beautiful. Okay, look at that. See how it doesn't really take time. If you have a lot to do, because you, you are going to be making quite a few of these blocks. <clears throat> I have sat in front of the TV with, uh, yeah, I actually use a wooden cutting board because then things don't shift. I just make sure it's darn clean before I do. But that way your patches don't move around. If you try to mark on something like a tray, Unless it's a tray with some texture, if it's just a metal tray, they slide. And then your marks aren't exact, and it's very frustrating. So I can sit there and watch you know, anything and mark these. And then I have everything marked and hardly know it. OK, time to show you what's going to be happening here. When you put these together, oops, come here, baby. Put him back like that and that, and there we go. Okay, Ta and right there. Let's see. Okay, when you go to put these together, there are a couple things you have to watch for that are really easy to do, and I can attest to this because I have done them. I have actually done them more than once. For instance, when you're sewing this strip, you're going to sew that to that to that, the square to a piece rectangle to a little triangle. You want to make sure of two things. You want to make sure that this is going like that, and not like this. <sighs> I sewed about five this way and had to take them all out. Oh, I'm going to make sure it's like that. And then the other thing is the triangle. You really need to have these all laid out to know what direction it's supposed to be in because it's really easy to go, oops, but you don't know it's a problem until you get it back over here and you have to take it out. So I'm going to make sure I have things aligned properly when I pin them together. Another thing, if you haven't done the cutting for this yet, and I'm guessing you haven't because we've told you to cut as we go along, use starch on these pieces, on this fabric, or starch alternative, because you have bias here, bias here, bias here. Things are really moving, and a little starch can help you out. Okay, I'm not going to show you how to piece these because, of course, you've pieced lots of them. But I am going to show you the piecing order for this. All right. This would get sewn to that in a, you know, your standard, sew it together like that. And then this is added by aligning these corners, okay? So you're going to have a little point sticking out. 
and that's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, and then when it's sewn on, it'll be there. Then you're gonna sew these two together. It's kind of like three columns. Now, when you sew this to this, you are gonna want to align these corners, okay? So you're gonna put them right sides together and make sure that those corners match up, line up like that. And you're gonna stitch along here, and then that will open up and be sewn together. And again, you're gonna have this point sticking out over here, and that's fine, you're supposed to. Then, what you're going to do is you're going to add this guy on. Now, you're gonna be sewing that to that first. It's same old, same old. You're just aligning seam allowances. And then this guy, when he goes on, you'll see that's still gonna be sticking out a little bit. No problem. You align that at the corner. Just the corner goes together. You sew it, you flip it out. And then you'll be trimming some things that stick out. You just wanna make sure you're trimming them so they're a quarter of an inch from the points. And by quarter of an inch, I don't mean a quarter of an inch this way. I mean a quarter of an inch measuring straight in from your raw edge. So, because this had a point sticking out, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my ruler on <clears throat> this way just to check it. If you're actually wanting to trim, you're gonna put it, put the ruler this way with that quarter inch mark going right across that intersection, just like that. And then you can trim with your rotary cutter. And I would do the same thing down here. And you may wish to use a longer ruler, but I really don't want you trimming much of anything else. I just want you trimming out those points. And I wanted to show you how, see how this guy looks wonky? That triangle looks like, oh boy, something's really wrong there. See how it kind of swoops? That is not a problem. It just means that the bias here has stretched a little bit. And when I sew it to the next patch, I'll just bring it back in line. And then when this gets sewn to everybody else, it'll just sit right down. If you're really bothered by it, you can spray it with a little water and just kind of put it back where you want it to be, but you don't have to. Okay, so once you have these guys all made, for each side of the, the triangle border, you're gonna need five of the D half blocks with the beige going around the outside and four with the purple. So four of these and five of these. Okay, the way you sew them together into this big long strip, is you're gonna sew them by twos. You don't wanna try and sew the whole thing at once because then you're trying to put that all through the machine every single time. So instead, what I did, and I know this is too long for you to see the whole thing, but you can see enough here. I first, I just laid them out in the right order. And it's gonna look like this, like that, and like this. In your instructions, you'll see it aligned the way it's aligned in the quilt. It's gonna be on point in your pictures, in your illustrations. And the way it's pieced is in sets of two. So this is a unit here, and here's another one, and here's another one, and then this one at the end is sewn on all by itself. And you'll see that in your diagrams. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to sew this guy to this guy and then how to add it on to that. All right, I'm gonna turn this over. And as you can see, I've got match points on here and it's a darn good thing I do because it can be, if you're really good and a lot of people are, you can sort of eyeball how much that overhang should be with the point. Well, on something like this where it's got a lot of bias and it's gonna be on point, I like to use match points to make sure they, they actually match. So I'm gonna pin through that guy Turn this one over. The match point is harder to see here, but I can see it. I used a little bit of green ink this time. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna do what I always do. I just hold that guy, the positioning pin, as we can call him. Hold it like that. And then just add a pin there. I don't have to pin here and here unless I want to. I'm going to be feeling um, where the seams are because I want the seams to line up here with these points. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that now. I'm going to feel that seam, I'm butting them up against one another. Okay, that feels pretty good. Yeah. It's kind of like that whole thing about uh, measure twice and cut once. I do that with aligning too. I kind of align it till I really know what's right before I put a pin in. Okay, so this is again really common. You're gonna have a, 
a little guy swinging out there because he's biased on this edge. No problem. I'm going to use my awl to just bring him back into line like that. And I'll put a pin in. And I'll throw pins across the table while I'm at it. OK. Then over here, I'm going to check. Remember those match points? I've got it pinned. He's been swung in where he belongs. And I'm going to see if on the back that's come through the right place. It has. Yay. OK. You can, of course, do the, the uh, positioning pin first if you prefer. I think I, I, uh, lots of times I swing that in first just because it's easier to handle to, to do the match points if it's already underneath where the fabric, you know, where it's supposed to be. OK, butting those seams up together. And I'm just going to throw a pin in there. And now I'm going to sew from here to here, OK? All righty. Get that guy going. I move my little pin cushion over here. OK, so I know this is aligned properly. And I'm just going to put it right under there. If you haven't checked your quarter inch seam allowance because you just didn't get to it, you might want to do that before you start sewing these guys together because <clears throat> it matters who you've got so many points and things going on. OK, let's get that pin out. Now I'm just going to sew those together. OK, and right here, because there's so much fabric in that seam line, so it's kind of poofed up, the awl can also just push those down so they, they lie down the way you want them to when you go under there. Just don't stitch on top of it. If you don't have an awl, I heartily recommend one. You go get one. It doesn't really matter what kind as long as you're comfortable with it. Oops. OK, come here, baby. There it is. I want to make sure I can see that purple fabric at least a little bit underneath to make sure they're aligned. Alrighty. I'm feeling under here to make sure my seam allowances are lying the way I want them to. OK, right there. And nail this little guy. And move that pin. OK, right through that match point. There we go. And I'll cut that off. And cut that off. And now over to the iron. I'll move my little marking people out of the way. I know they're not really people, but close enough. OK, so now I'm just going to do this, the, you know, setting the seam. Give it a little pressing right there. OK, and then I'm going to open it up. And here's something a little different, something I don't do very often, but I do it with this because there are so many points and things that can, if you bend that fabric, the seam allowance in that just one direction, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, eight layers of fabric in one point. So I press these open. You can see how I've done them here. All right, so what I'm going to do, it's really simple. You're just going to use your fingers to pull it apart like that and then press. Don't press your fingers. And please don't use steam. When you have your fingers close to the pressing like we do here, if you've got steam, your steam going, you're going to get burned because the steam will come right out around the edges of the iron and you're going to get burned. Now right here, it's having a hard time separating. And I'm just going to use an awl. I could do it with my fingers, but I wanted to show you how this works. Like that. And you just lay them down. OK, there we go. And now that it's pressed open, it's going to be flatter when it goes together with everyone else. OK, so that's sewn on. And this seam where you sew it to the main strip is exactly the same. It's what you just did. You're going to do the same thing. You see how those went together to form a diamond, and these form a diamond or a square that's two colors. You're just doing the same thing. So you would align them like I just did. You're going to align them and then watching your match points. And then you're going to sew them together. And that's all there is to it. The only thing that might be a little weird is when you sew this one to this one, if that feels because that's already been sewn, all you're doing, your match point's going to be right on the seam. 
Okay, so you can just pin right through like that. Okay, and that's it. So you're gonna be making four of these and they're fun to make. They're really beautiful. I, I love this, the design of this is really cool because this is not something you do every day. To make half a block and connect them diagonally, that's something different and it's, it's fun. It's fun to do something you haven't done before and just something a little out of the ordinary. So I hope you uh, are having fun with this. I'm really enjoying it myself. I, the fabrics always make it for me. So this is um, the ribbon floral collection from Banner Tex. And of course, we have a kit so you can have the same fabrics that I do. If you want to get the kit, just go to mccallsquilting.com slash quiltalong and the information for ordering the kit will be there. And your homework is to make your strips <clears throat> out of your half blocks. So I hope you're having fun. I hope you're, well, if, if you've got, <laughs> if you're like me and you have these fabrics, you're, you're doing some weird little petting things that, ooh, I, I wanted to show you something. I don't know if you, you probably can't see it with this lighting. If you, when you get the fabric, take it to a window on a sunny day, and when you tilt it like that, it's like all these little sparkles, like sun on waves. It's the coolest because of these teeny tiny little metallic dots. So yes, I know, I'm, I'm a fabriholic. It's true. Okay, so that's it for this time. I will see you back here next time. And as always, thank you so much for joining me. I really feel that I feel your presence and I feel your, your participation. And I just, I appreciate it so much because it's so much fun for me to get together with other quilters, even if it's through a camera. So have fun this week. I'll see you back here next time. And next time we're gonna go on to another block. Now, thanks so much. Have a good time sewing. This episode of McCall's Quilt and Quilt Along is brought to you by Bannertex, fabric for quilters, by quilters.